Next set of experiment that we looked at after the pulse chase experiment was the yeast secretory mutations. Now, this was done by another scientist. Again, we're not really concerned with the scientist. Um, but again, what this did is that we used yeast as our model organism this time, again, to demonstrate the secretion pathway. Now, the pulse chase experiment that we just went over gave us a brief overview of the pathway, ER, Golgi, secretion. This gave us a little bit more detail, but still showed us the same pathway. Again, we chose yeast as our model organism, because remember, yeast are very simple, single-cell eukaryotic organism. A lot of their proteins are homologous to our human proteins as well. So what they did then is that they caused, or they knows that yeast produce uh, proteins that also go through secretion. Uh, for example, yeast secrete mating factors that attract other yeast in order to mate. So here what we're going to be looking at then are a various classes of mutations that were done to the proteins or to some part of the cell that somehow inhibited the step-by-step -step pathway or the step-by-step -step secretion pathway. So this kind of gave us a little extra detail on top of what the pulse chase experiment had already demonstrated. So we have five classes of mutation, classes A, B, C, D, and E. Each mutation, as you can see and as we'll go through, basically inhibits a certain step along the, uh, along the secretory pathway. So with class A mutation, but initially with the class A mutation, what's going on? is that you have the protein being made out in the cytoplasm but is unable to get into the endoplasmic reticulum, the ER, which is, remember, the first step. So this protein gets made out in the cytoplasm initially, but because it has that signal sequence, which again we're going to get into that mechanism in a couple of review sessions later, that protein, if it has an N-terminus signal sequence, is supposed to then go into the ER and get deposited into the ER for processing and then to move on through the rest of the pathway. But here, with the mutated protein remains in the cytoplasm. Now remember, this is a crucial experimental technique that was utilized here. And so what that technique was, and that you, have to, that you are responsible for knowing cold, is the signal sequence. Okay? That was how they mutated the protein such that it could not get into the ER. By simply removing or manipulating the signal sequence at the end terminus of this mating factor protein, that protein cannot get into the ER. So remember, the whole point of signal sequence is it's just like a ticket to the movies. If you lost your ticket to the movies, they're not going to let you in. Same idea. These proteins have lost their tickets to get into the ER. Very simple. So that's how the class A mutation occurs. Now we let the so now we don't touch the protein. We allow it to go now into the ER in class B. So the class B mutation, we see that the proteins have made their way into the ER. Here in red again are the proteins. They are in the ER, but they stay in the ER and they do not have the ability to leave the ER. Now again, because we've already looked at this in class, and again, we will go through it later on though in the next few episodes that I produce, but a way to prevent the protein from leaving the ER is to somehow mess with the ER's ability or the coat proteins to even assemble vesicles. So you prevent vesicle formation. Therefore, the proteins are stuck inside the ER and can't get out. Because remember, in order to move from one organ to coated vesicles, the protein just doesn't secrete out of an organelle and float in the cytosol. Okay? The class C mutation, now the third type, we see the proteins leave the ER through vesicles, and now these vesicles, though, have lost the ability to go to the Golgi. Now, remember, when proteins are going from the ER to the Golgi, this is forward movement, also known as anterograde movement. So ER to Golgi is anterograde movement. 
And remember the vesicles that are used here are covered with the coat protein COP2, COP2. That's the coat protein of the vesicles that the proteins that are destined to go in the anterograde movement are packaged into. So COP2 coated vesicles go from the ER to the Golgi. But as you can see, in this mutation, the vesicle is not able to move on to the Golgi. It too has stuck out in the cytoplasm. Now, I know you remember this one. So how would you prevent the vesicle from going to the Golgi? So it gets out of the ER, you have your vesicles, but it's unable to get to the Golgi. I'll give you a minute to think about it. Tick, 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 tick. You give up? Remember the thing about V snares and T snares. Vesicle snare proteins and target snare proteins. So remember, on the coated vesicles here, there is a protein that gets embedded in the membrane of these vesicles called V snares. Remember, these are long alpha helical proteins. And on the Golgi, or on the target membrane, there are also alpha helical proteins sticking out, known as T snares. So a vesicle has T snare. A vesicle has V snares that will only recognize and bind to certain T snares. So, how do we keep a vesicle from going to reaching its target? We can simply manipulate the V snare on the vesicle. So by dissolving or cutting off the V snare from the vesicle, this vesicle's got nowhere to go because it can't match up. Okay? So keep that in mind. Now finally in the class, or not finally just yet, but in the fourth class of mutation now, class D, we have the proteins they are gone from the secretory vesicle and they are in the Golgi now. But now again you prevent them from leaving the Golgi. So again you manipulate the protein such that it has the inability, that means it lacks the ability to get packaged into vesicles or secretory granules. And then finally class E, you guessed it, you let it leave the Golgi, get packaged into secretory granules which should fuse to the plasma membrane and then release the protein. But again, the vesicles are stuck between the trans-Golgi network and the plasma membrane. And again, you would manipulate the V-snares or the T-snares even in this case. So if you manipulate the V-snares, these vesicles have no idea where their destination is supposed to be. So that's how you would cause each of these mutations and again, they demonstrate the secretory pathway of ER to Golgi to secretion, but with a little bit more detail, and showing again that these proteins, as they move from one organelle to the other, that they must be packaged into vesicles.